And I'm going to come right off the bat before I actually get into it and tell you what I liked and what I don't like and tell you what I'll rate it. Okay. okay. My rating for this movie was a 7.5. Okay. I actually quite enjoyed it. Mm. I thought it was good. Wait, wait, did, wait, did Jerry have a not good IMAX experience? <laughs> Holla back, y'all. A few times been around that track, but it's not just going to happen like that. Because this <laughs> week, everybody's around the table. Mm. We're hanging out. Episode 170. This sounds like Diners, Dives, and Drives. Eight of the Joystick Show. <laughs> yeah. Picture me with... Bright blonde fucking frosted tips, and, and we're gonna have Corvette. a good time, man. You know, is that how Guy Fieri talks? Kinda, yeah. It's like, yo, dog, what's yeah. up, man? He says, dog. If it's a black guy, <laughs> hey, he says, dog. brother. Hey, brother, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> yo, brother. It's like you're not wrong either. <laughs> he code switches, takes one bite, and <laughs> fist <laughs> bump. Welcome to the Joystick Show, the only podcast where Dylan and Joey's side of the table cut us off all the time, uh, mm-hmm. and I can't wait to count it off how many times they're going to inevitably do it this episode. That's just me airing out my grievances right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also just to say I miss Dylan. I feel like I, I haven't seen you in a week, but there's something about, like, you haven't been present in the chat. Yeah, I, agree, yeah, yeah, I was vanished. Like, yeah. it, was, it, wasn't, it, was, it wasn't a good time mm-hmm. for me. Like, I went through a whole mental despair, and you were just weren't there, you know? Yeah, you had to deal <laughs> with fun. us. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> Call me. And next time I am, like mm-hmm. fucking, we got to play some Cinnatoon Ertle. But more um, about that in a bit. Yep. Uh, full table here. It's a good one. It's gonna be a, a, a fun episode. If you want to know what we're talking about, it's their list every episode. Oh, cool. Uh, fucking, you could like us if you want to. You know, <laughs> It'd be cool to like. You us. could subscribe us too. Subscribe us. It'd be cool subscribe to subscribe us. Too. Uh, fucking so, uh, subscribe uh, bus. Subscribe. Perhaps like now it's a subscribe, but it's on a bus. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm out of practice. You got to thank the I gotta, bus driver. It's hard to explain. I have lots of stuff prepped for the actual episode. Intro, nothing. Yeah, I have nothing no. for this. <laughs> I feel like it's never. I feel like nah. never. That's not our uh, strong suit. Yeah, but uh, it is going to be a fun one. And mm-hmm. if anything, we'll jump right into the first thing that I have uh, prepared for y'all. Fair enough. Uh, real quick, Deal. I have to make an announcement. So we are going to do one of our very popular patented trivia segments that we've done on Detroit. I think nice. this is actually the first Roll one of the, the year. Slaves, boy. I think this is the first one of the Ready. year. Let's However, go. there is a bit of a twist. Okay. Uh, first off, I'm going to pass out the buzzers. When you get the buzzers, feel free to record your little thing. You know you know how it works on the show. Be, be quick with you. it, though. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick. Uh, but the reason you might be thinking to yourself, why didn't we do this beforehand, is because one of you is actually Ugh. not technically allowed to play. Hmm. Oh, oh s- I know what this is. For a specific reason. I know what okay? this is, yeah. And I'll explain in a second. So, here's a buzzer for Dylan, and here's a buzzer for Jerry. Huh. Joey, you are still going to be able to participate. Okay. But you will not be able to compete. Okay, what Understood? is Understood? So, go ahead. If you don't like what your buzzers are, feel free to re-record them and whatnot. <laughs> Wait, no. I have to do it right away, right? Yeah, it's late. Just hurry up. Just fucking okay. get it down. This <laughs> <laughs> is gonna be beeps, bro. Look it. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Are, are you happy with your sound? Yeah. All right. Cool. We are going to be playing my new hit segment. Uh, it's all mine. Nobody look at the, the TV. We still haven't perfected technology for this yet. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, fucking view and then. Fucking don't look, Dylan. God, you're I'm literally so, I'm, the I'm rules. totally not peeking. All right, now you, now you can look at the Joey screen. should I'm be sorry. That took a while. E. E. No, guys. <laughs> guys, we're not playing E. Guys, we're playing E movies. See what e. I did there? All right, listen up here. Uh, I might be the cinephile of the group, being as how I'm a filmmaker and mm-hmm. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of movies. And I review lots of movies and television, uh, televisions. I review lots of television models here. <laughs> the Trinitron is my favorite. Uh, I review lots of content here on the podcast is what I'm saying. But one of us here at Joystick actually writes written reviews of the movies he watches. And that's mm. Joey. Oh, Joey writes, <laughs> Joey writes written reviews on his Letterboxd app. Feel free to, to follow him. Spooky Quartz right here. And uh, every movie that Joey watches, he goes ahead and he writes a neat little review about what he thought about it. But one thing that I always found interesting about Joey's reviews is at the end of them, he puts some emojis at the end no, he actually <laughs> to, uh, to basically show, you know, like it, in a weird way, you could kind of tell what the movies are. It's almost yeah. like a little emoji plot line, so to speak. Uh-huh. So I have seven examples Ooh. for you. You're going to see the emojis first. If you think you know what the movie is, hit uh-huh. the buzzer. Give me an answer. 
in the case that neither of you know what the movie is, that's where Joey comes in. Joey, you are then allowed to give a one-word hint. So make it good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then they'll be able to answer again. Oh, okay. Interesting. So are you guys ready for e movies? Ready. Yes. I've been slacking on Letterbox. Let's let's <laughs> jump right into number one. If you guys know it, go ahead and buzz. Bam. Yeah, what you thinking? Here? TMNT. That is 100% Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Technically, colon Mutant Mayhem, but I will accept <laughs> the franchise if you know what it is. So that's a really great start off the yeah. bat. And might I just say, salad, Joey. Yeah. I think you think nice. you That's kind of what, yeah. I think he nailed it. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys ready for number two? Mm-hmm. Bam. That is Dylan here. Uh, This is Godzilla? This is Godzilla, yes. It's Godzilla minus one, but That's like, you know, same thing. The franchise. Yeah, I knew, it, was, I knew yeah. it wasn't Kong. I knew it wasn't Just had one. to make sure. Yes, okay. there's a lizard. There's no monkey. Yeah. That's how you know. All right. Yeah. All right, so far so good, Joe. I'm having fun watching this. I remember that. All right, and feel free to if you have anything to chirp. These are good. Go ahead. Fucking numero tres, bam. (laughs) Oh. This is uh, 2023, the Barbie movie. Fucking Dylan is. Is that the Barbie movie? Yeah, 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 that is 100 percent the Barbie (laughs) movie. So that's gonna that's gonna go ahead and be two for Dylan. What's the horse? The horse it's a big is, plot line in the movie. It's a plot <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> All right. Ready? We're going to move down to number four. Okay. Two to one. Let's see if Jerry this can get, back, like get back on the board here. Bam. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Oppenheimer. This is uh, Oppenheimer. Another 2023 <laughs> classic came out on the same day. As the previous that's one. literally the the, the, <laughs> last, <laughs> the last two are like that's so That's Killian good. Murphy right there. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how they base the emoji. He literally was smoking the entire movie, and I was like, cigarette, yeah. put it in there. All right, fair enough. That's three to one. Woo. Let's move it on to, uh, this is going real fast, but that's fine. I like it. No, this is good. Yeah, we can talk after. This is good. Let's go to number five. Bam. Got a lot here. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I remember wait, Bobby wait. talking about this movie. I don't know what it is. I think. Wait. For the record, I sometimes when Bobby puts on a movie, a letterbox gets put up. The also, same for night. the record, this has got to be the best one. Easily the best out of all of them. This is like the entire plot of the movie. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is Talladega Nights. You're damn Ballad right. This is Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby. You got a gay no Frenchman, idea. bro. <laughs> then there's a car accident, and Ricky gets totally for real paralyzed, bro. <laughs> and shout out to Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> baby Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Lord, Baby Jesus. So that's looking like a 4 1 for Dill. Uh, Jerry, thanks for playing, but we're still going to go to the next two. Don't this worry. Fun. This is fun. You, like can, you yeah. can still get a 4 3 here, you know? I didn't expect to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to this one. Bam. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Ocean's Eleven. It's 100% Brad That's Pitt. That's crazy. Clooney, Ocean's Eleven. Boom, they got a slot machine. They got the Met at the Fountain. The Met at the Fountain, the deal. Oh. I could hear the song Joey, already, you're bro. a god, He's bro. a genius. He's, Joey knows how to represent any movie. He's an this emoji, dare I say, an e-movie artist. Shout out to the segment <laughs> name. All right, I think this is the last one. So, yes, this is the last one. So, Dylan might be able to clutch this out with a solid 6-1. If not, could be a 5-2. Uh, and uh, I think, if anything, this might be the one that Joey has to help us out on if you guys can't figure it out. So, let's go to the last one. Bam! This is... It's just overload, honestly. Yeah. I cannot... Okay, so... This is too many. What's the first per- thing? I, I wonder if Joey knows what it is. I think I do. Okay, but I what's don't the fir- remember. What's the first person? Like, the first thing? The narrow? Like, you know, I feel like before they were just like... I'm going to give you 10 seconds to read The name guess. of the movie, and now it's like the whole plot. I'm going to be honest. I made this, and I don't even know what movie this is. <laughs> Joey, look at my mouth, and nobody else look at my mouth. I'm closing my eyes. Oh, there you go. You figured it out. All right. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna swing it to Joey. Joey, uh, I was gonna do a guess. Did I, I put know. that? You know what? Let's let let's. Let oh, Dylan, I did put that. Let's let Dylan swing a guess real quick. Uh, ooh, it's, um, I can give you a hint, and it will it will clear up. But if Dylan wants to give a guess, we'll let him guess. But if not, we're gonna. I actually, Joey. I don't know. I Joey, no I one no word hint. One word hint. Bathroom. Fair. That's supposed to help us. That is that honestly that does uh, clear that symbol up a lot. Bathroom, chain, foot. 
That's all you need to know right now. But yeah, if you just think of those three. Saw? Hit the buzzer and then say it. Some type saw. Okay, Some you type got of it. Saw. You got okay. it. You had to hit the buzzer for okay. the fucking count. I was like, wait. Yes, that one was difficult. Is oh. that the last one? Yeah, that was the last one. What is this? A, I saw a movie last night and I didn't letterbox it. So I'm just going to send you the emojis I would have put for that movie <laughs> uh, and see if you can get it. It's, it's just, on the it's, it's just, on our group chat. It's just for me. I just get to fucking It's on our group chat. Fucking Joey watched the uh, Joey watched the movie with a boat, a box, and a vampire. Fantastic. Is it Renfield or something? I don't know. Oh, this is the the Voyage of the Demeter. Was yeah, it, was it, good? it was. I saw it last night. Yeah, I forgot that movie came out. Look, I get I got to I get to win one too. We Feels good. Thanks for playing a movies, guys. This is fun. I hope you liked it. Make I, make more right now. I honestly speaking, yeah. I'll have you know that I actually have two segments primed, ready to go. Okay, so, let's go. I'm gonna make a segment. This one is I'm gonna a, make another one. One is a Wikipedia themed segment. One is a kind of a more comedy themed segment, but it's still a lot of fun nonetheless. So stay tuned for those. It should be dope. It should be a good time. Thanks for playing your movies, mm-hmm. and thanks for Joey for those uh those reviews that allowed me to rip him off and, and make that content. So let's go. Speaking of uh, Joey and reviews, can I review a show that I I saw not too long ago? Go for it, pal. I went to see, uh, I saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. You lost the <laughs> no more. Does Jerry get to keep his? I yeah, don't want it. He hasn't struck out yet. All right. He's he's on good behavior. <laughs> okay. he's, a, he's, a, he's a better man. Um, I saw uh the series finished uh has been hotel the first uh season, um so a backstory has been hotel was a. Uh, 2019 YouTube animation made by Vivian Morado. I forgot her name. I'm sorry. But she goes by Vivzy Pop. That's her YouTube name. And she made this show about the print, the daughter of uh, Lucifer uh, wants to help with the overpopulation in hell. So she creates a, hell, a hotel to rehabilitate sinners so they can go into heaven. And it's all about like her struggle to like make that change. Um, so she put it on YouTube and it had a lot of very popular YouTubers at the time. Stampers was a part of the voice cast. Unica Joe, which you guys know as the dog flying. He was part of the voice cast. And a couple of other YouTubers were a part of the voice cast. And then it got picked up and she couldn't speak about it. Um, where it got picked up was on Amazon Prime. So the first season is now all on Amazon Prime. And I got to watch it. And it was pretty good. It, um it was pretty it was pretty good um i think you know to fill up that space when we were waiting to find out more about the show not only did she work on this show for prime but she made another show called hell of a boss on youtube and has even more cast members she has daryl from walking dead norman reedus he's a voice character on the show okay um the guy that voices billy from billy and mandy he's on the show brendan rogers is on the show a lot, and she just managed to get all these like very up and coming big voice actors to be in that uh her her other show the Hasman Hotel that's on Prime has a lot of killer Broadway stars on it too, Jeremy Jordan, um, Christian Borle, uh, a lot of the the this actress that she played Sandy in the SpongeBob musical Jeffrey oh, Von Jeffrey yeah man it's just Can't a, forget Jeffrey Von Jeffrey um, Keith David Keith David is also in it and it's just like that's the only person I know is on this show it's Keith it's, David it's uh it was really entertaining uh, and let me get to the plot you know same plot but um she introduced a villain which is a- Adam from Adam and Eve who's an angel and he's he basically goes down to hell and kills a couple of the demons just to like stop with the overpopulation in case of an overtaking so they send a bunch of angels to like go and kill them, but she wants to try to change that and say, "Well, can, we can rehabilitate them." And then she manages to get into heaven to like a lot of lore. Like if you have come from a very religious background or know about religion, you see a lot of lore how they play into each other. And it was a uh, I recommend it. I think it was pretty interesting. Do you have any questions for me? Because I'm I'm drawing a blank of what else to talk about. No, I gotta be real with you. I I gave it five minutes and it just wasn't for me. I wanted to be prepped. I, it's not even just the animation. I'm just not into theater shit either. So I, get I was that. just like, nah, um, I can see why it's, it's very, so popular. Yeah. Wait, is it extravagant? Like, what do you mean, like, the theater stuff? Is it like it's singing? It's almost a musical because oh, okay. there's a lot of Broadway mm-hmm. talent. It's really loud and just okay. like, yeah. Abrasive. Yeah. Okay. A lot of the com- a lot of people also don't like it because it's, uh, they're like, oh, cursing equals comedy in that show because they say a lot of swears 
in such a short amount of time that it's like, oh, it's this is like twelve year old humor, like oh fuck fuck shit. Yeah, that gives me like Blink One Eight Two vibes. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind. Like, eh. If it's funny, it's funny. Mm-hmm. But, but I liked it. No, I mean to give it credit, I see the fucking advertisements everywhere. Like I've seen it on the subway ads. We saw it here one time setting up for the podcast. It just popped up. So I know that it's like. When Joey first brought it up, I really just thought of it as like a YouTube animated series, but I didn't know to the degree that it got picked up and it was like being syndicated now. Unfortunately, uh, all the people that were part of the pilot all got scrapped, mm-hmm. and uh, there was some like some people were like, "I'm not gonna watch the show because you know, Stamper's not in it," and she, it just continued. It just continued, and I think well, I got news too- for you, pal, about Stamper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of YouTube stars turn out not to be. Uh, Stable people. Stable people. Yeah. No. Yeah, There's a reason why they do YouTube and uh, also gives no. me vibes of like Camp Camp from Rooster Teeth because now it's coming back and people uh-huh. are like really excited about it. But they changed the whole voice cast, but because of like uh, like reasons of characters voicing other characters of different ethnicities and shit. But people are like legit pissed about it because they loved the original voice cast so much. The original voice cast was really good. They were like, we didn't have a problem with it at all, and they didn't even do anything like stereotypical with it. It was just his own normal voice, but he played a black character. But they're like, no, we're gonna change it up completely. So, hmm. but yeah, shout outs to honestly speaking, just shout outs to YouTube animators like actually starting to fucking break the mold now. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool to see, especially people like Psychic Pebbles and and this chick now. So yeah, we're you yeah, I'm waiting for that guy's show. Yeah, everybody's waiting for fucking Smiling Friends season. I just he, hope um, it's longer than season one. I didn't even know, but he showed a sneak peek. Sneak peek preview at the Comic Con that just passed. Oh, oh wow! So it's it's in the works. It's gonna get done. Oh, yeah. I'm just hoping that like you know like the first season was like a test run, and that's why they only got seven episodes. So that I hope at the second season we get at least eleven. Like that'd be fire. But that'd be fire. yeah. I'll take at least the same amount for what it's worth. Word. I don't like the Comic Con cast. I saw the video on on uh, YouTube, and it showed like there was sneak peek at Comic Con, and every little joke was just like. <laughs> And I was like, stop. Oh, it doesn't need to be that loud. So 1 to 10 has been Hotel Season 1. 1 to 10? Mm-hmm. It's not a review without the fucking number. Yeah, word. Uh, I'm going to give it a 8.5 out of 10. But I think the reason I put it that high is because I like the music. Mm. For story, you know, if I if you would have got rid of the music, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Okay. That's but fine. I mean, you said it's like a musical type but thing. But yeah, so. like it's vital to it. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's part of the narrative. You know, it's like saying, "Oh, hairspray was cool, but those fucking songs." Man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. You know, if Les Mis didn't have all that fucking singing, pretty much, it'd be fifteen minutes. I mean, this side of the table can go into a movie review, but before we get into that, fucking, mm-hmm. where have you been? Doing yeah. That? So I did. I went on a hiatus a bit from the group chat. And I didn't like that. Just based scary. on working. <laughs> Open the close three days in a row, followed by wow. being away in Long Island at a wedding mm-hmm. for the weekend. And so you it, stood there? Yeah. Okay. So we stood there at the Garden City Hotel, which, guys. Fancy. It's it's the fucking Tipton, bro. Oh, where? Yeah, it's literally like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Like the Ashley like, Tisdale's like, working yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 100%. You're I like, like yeah, yeah. And it's like. That black dude who killed a guy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's in the basement. <laughs> you got like a spa. You got it. Pool, gym. I was like, what the fuck? It's Brent, the- this song is married. I'm sorry. Yeah, Coach Macaulay Culkin. It's, yeah. We were talking about that mm-hmm. the other night. It's a weird. Yeah, it is weird. I remember I saw them in a photo. I was like, what the fuck? Anyways, uh, it felt really like, you know, like I still felt like I was in Long Island. So it mm-hmm. wasn't like 100% luxury, but it was like 80% luxury. Part of Long Island. Uh, Garden yes. City. Oh, that's yeah. fair enough. Yeah. There's also Garden City Plaza, which is a bit different. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Saturday, instead of, uh, I had a very eventful day because I went um, to a place that's beautiful, very magical, called Ikea. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, Ikea's fun. Good stuff. Good stuff at Ikea. Uh, fucking madhouse on a weekend, but yeah. you know what they expect. Pretty fun. Afterwards, we went to Peter Luger, as one does. What very a beautiful nice. day. So the Peter Luger in Brook, you know, Peter Luger, like yes, OG but the, or uh, the Great Neck location. Okay, that's what I was it curious. Is, it is prettier. Because I was like, you know, I, I get you, but. Yeah, I saw the Williamsburg location in a video and I was like, this doesn't feel worth $300. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like just how it looked. Uh, beautiful experience. Like honestly, one of the best dining experiences I had. But it was nice because for the first half of the meal, we sat in the corner of the establishment. No one next to us wonderful right very quiet halfway through 
a band of 10 to 12 Italian henchmen in a movie decided to, <laughs> to, 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 decided to bustle on in. And the rest of my meal was me and Marianthi just absolutely devouring a pound of steak, but also just listening to this man, these men have yeah, a conversation. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I actually wrote down things I've heard these men say because it is abs- It felt like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Disclaimer: If any of you gentlemen are watching the podcast, they're, they're, they're fucking. Us. They're no. fucking not. I know. So the entire time they just talked about things that happened at their softball game. Okay. <laughs> to have the money that you play softball and then after go with the Peter Lugers. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about what the fuck these guys said because they really uh they really blew my mind. My favorite one was uh if we have that special ed umpire again, I'll kill myself. <laughs> no seriously, I will kill myself. Uh I'd rather cut my own leg off than deal with this dumbass dog. Tomorrow I'm just going to let the door hang open, see what happens. Uh my dog is the only thing darker in the house than Richie. The whole night, they kept responding. Like In the 20 minutes, they kept referencing Richie. I didn't know if Richie was the dark guy at the table, was a different friend of theirs. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, my favorite, uh, last night I was watching There's Something About Mary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. 10 out of 10. Oh, my God. Uh, this one is, um, I'm happy our wives aren't here to see this steak. <laughs> what? What are we doing to the steak? What are they doing with the steaks That's, at home? <laughs> that is, you're having an affair with the meat? Can we can we really break this down? This sounds like you said a Quentin Tarantino yeah, film. Yeah, like, oh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. a real dialogue. Oh, shit, bro. And there was, and there was, um... An older gentleman who was like 75 who was there yeah. who just would make sports references and then would go, nah, <laughs> nah. And I'm like, is that, is that all he says? Is this guy is this have Alzheimer's and all he can say is, uh-huh. Can I be honest though? Yeah. I like the idea that somewhere in Garden City, Long Island, there's two Italian dudes sitting in, at, around a table, in, around two microphones at a basement, and they're like, Yo, we went to fucking Outback Steakhouse one time. We were around these five dudes, these Hispanic dudes, right? They were talking about Kyle Rittenhouse owning a spaghetti <laughs> farm and shit, bro. I wrote it all down. There was one chubby one. He kept saying number 12 met cock or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, but... Yeah, he kept saying boo. We didn't know yeah, that man. He like, kept saying we got a boo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was the highlight of that night. If I ever see those guys again, uh, yeah, I... Don't please, please accept Dylan into your group. Please, I, I, <laughs> I was, I was absolutely astounded by these gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, that night was followed by eating an edible and falling asleep for twelve hours. That's fire. Yeah. Nice. That's what I did right before this mm-hmm. podcast. Exactly. Except the falling asleep. That's gonna come yeah. after the podcast. Mm-hmm. So correct. Yeah. Very correct. It's fire, Dylan. Yeah. Missed you. Glad I'm to back. have you back. I'm back. back you to work. always post such nice photos late as of late. I was telling <laughs> Nicole, I was when we were driving home. I was like. Dylan posts nice photos. Like it's always like wherever you go with Marianti, you have like a lot of photos. Question: How 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 often does Marianti watch the Joystick Show? Uh she's she's a few weeks behind right now. So, oh, so if but I talk minor shit about her, she won't catch she'll, it. She'll for... get mad about it a month from now. Okay, fair. Yeah. <laughs> Why is every picture Marianti fucking taking a Dutch angle? It makes me upset. I feel oh, like I'm watching like Dutch a, angle. What's that? Yeah, she, she. I get. I feel panicked every time I see a fucking <laughs> picture of Dylan and Marianti. It's like that. I feel like I'm watching Thor 2 over here, and I'm like, fucking keep it straight. Like, Jesus Christ. It looks better that way. Sorry, Mariante, I love you. This it looks fucking, better that I just, way. You, you, she posted the 10, and I was like, every single one is fucking diagonal. I never noticed that. Yeah. yeah You're yeah. never going to unnotice mm-hmm. it, man. I'm going to about to steal it and just post pictures of me and Dylan Dutch angle. Just fucking mm-hmm. not. In the other direction. <laughs> in the other no, direction. No, 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 landscape stretched out. <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, I thought I kicked the remote. Yes. Yeah, yes. landscape. Landscape stretched out. Like super pixelated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. I'm looking like all my... <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and Jerry did a thing. Yeah, yes, I heard, we did. I heard. Jerry, Jerry, what did we do? We went to... Uh, com- to uh, conduct our uh, regular ritual. <laughs> to <laughs> to conduct to our come. regular ritual, bro. Conduct a regular ritual. What's the name of this ritual, bro? It's, the way? it's uh, what do we call it? It, it, it it's called Hymax. Mm-hmm. But yeah. To be fair, I was the only one who really enjoyed Hymax. Yeah, we just went to watch movies. Movie. We go to watch movies. It's a chill vibe, you know. Something we've been doing since Black Panther one, which is crazy. Yeah. It's a very Damn. long time ago. I watched that movie twice. Yeah. 
But uh, fucking, we went to go see Argyle. Fucking uh, Argyle's a new spy thriller that was made by Matthew Vaughn, who's a, or rather Mark Vaughn, who's become one of my favorite. Uh, directors over the past couple years he made the original kick-ass series oh he made uh more recently the kingsman series and now he has made argyle uh it's pretty cool let me just start off by saying critics hated this movie they tore it wow apart. yeah it's like an eh. i think it, it had like a 40 or 50 or something like really? that on tomatoes wow and i'm gonna come right off the bat before i actually get into it and tell you what i liked and what i don't like and tell you what i'll rate it okay, okay. My rating for this movie was a 7.5. Okay. I actually quite enjoyed it. Mm. I thought it was good. Wait, wait, did, wait, did Jerry have a not good high max experience? That's no, I'm fair. really interested. I so, but I want Jerry to hear what I have to yeah, say yeah, first yeah. before Jerry. <laughs> okay, it's right, right. so, like right. good cop, bad cop. cop. <laughs> and then on Rotten Tomatoes, I think the audience ended up giving it a 70%. Okay. So I was like, okay. Better. And anytime the audience is close to my score, I kind of feel not valified, va- you know, I feel valified. Valified. <laughs> valid and verified at the same okay. time. It's my new word. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not that off. So when I saw 30% at first, I was like, damn, mm-hmm. is that movie actually bad? <laughs> but I was like, nah, it's, it's enjoyable. Okay. Right off the bat, I'll say this. The movie has a ton of twists and turns, like lots of spoilerific stuff. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, this is going to be a spoiler. Can we do the premise? Can we go- we'll go over the premise of it, right? I'm going to go the over movie? the premise. Okay. Don't worry. I got this. Uh-huh. There's a cat. There's a- It's going to be a spoiler free review. Okay, In fact, the only thing I'm going to spoil about this movie is the post credit scene. And I'll do that later. Mm-hmm. So stick around here. So you're supposed to still fine. Movie has a lot of twists and turns, right? Uh, for what it's worth, personally speaking, I actually only was able to, to catch one. So for that being said, all the other ones actually kind of caught me off guard. And I was like, oh, cool. That's actually dope. Another thing I'll mention is I feel like when movies have a lot of twists and turns, especially like spy movies like that, mm-hmm. they tend to be kind of really out there and kind of like silly. Mm-hmm. But I felt like these worked pretty well. Like they actually flowed well into the next one. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. That's cool, right? But there's one big twist in the movie, like one big spoiler. Which, if you've seen the trailer, there's like that. Even the trailer asks the question, like, who's the real Argyle spy? Because in the movie, Argyle is a fictional spy in a mm-hmm. book, but in the trailer, a character says that there's a real version of Argyle, and that question finally gets answered. And when that question gets answered, it shifts the movie into a third act. Mm-hmm. And I'll say the third act is where the movie tanks a little bit. For okay. Yes. All right. So the first two acts of this movie are fucking really good in yeah. my opinion. And then the last act is w- I actually, weird. I You're actually like, uh-huh. don't like... This is actually one of my... This is the thing about movies. A lot of movies, I the, either the transition into the second act or the transition to the third act is like the movie goes to absolute shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or I feel like the movie completely changes. Gears. And I won't say it goes to absolute shit, but the tonality changes a lot. And it's like, uh-huh, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, so... Okay. Without spoiling anything, I'll say that the twist that shifts the movie from Act 2 to Act 3, I thought it was good. I didn't see it coming. I thought they did it pretty well. I was like, okay, I could get behind yeah. it. But how it's actually shown on screen, yeah, it throws you for a whirl, especially when you've watched the beginning of the movie. Okay. Uh, another thing I'll mention is, I guess this will be kind of spoilerific, but I'm not going to throw the, the alert up because it doesn't spoil anything plot-wise, is the the very end, the, the whole movie's filled with action sequences. If you've seen kick-ass movies or Kingsman movies, you know that yeah. Mark loves throwing these action sequences in. But all of the action sequences up until the last act are really, like, normal. Like, mm-hmm. train sequences, gunfights, to the point where it's, like, cool, right? It's digestible. Right. And then there's... Honestly, three back to back to back action sequences at the end of this movie that make you go, "What the fuck is this guy?" Doing? Yeah. <laughs> and to give him credit, he's a director who's known for these really out of the yeah. box. Yeah. Like I went back and thought about it. Like even Kickass has some really ridiculous ones, like Hit Girl's first yeah. uh, scene where you see this twelve-year-old girl just decapitating people and shit like that. Yeah. Right? You got the Kingsman Church scene, the Kingsman scene where people's heads are being blown mm-hmm. off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Always. So I will spoil what these three are. Okay. In one action sequences, uh, two of the main characters basically go in an all out like one against the full army gunfight but with colorful smoke grenades as they dance like a waltz as they're like shooting people and it's made to be choreographed really like beautifully and shit then there's (laughs) then there's there's a scene where a character uh i can't really say ice skates but skates on oil on a ship 
while like slicing people up with knives. So it's like a competitive ice skating action sequence. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. Which I is that, in my head. And I, my have head. To, I have to tell you, they're bizarre, but they're also kind of cool. Like, they're, yeah, in my yeah, head, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. awesome. It's, you know? you have to keep in mind, cool. the sequences themselves aren't bad. They just don't fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. just take you out of the whole movie. Cartoony so that it takes you out of the... the yeah. And then the, la- the last fight sequence takes place on top of the ship. And I'll let Jerry go ahead and... Because Jerry brought up a great point about... Oh, yeah. So... so so the last sequence. Wait, how, just, how wait, can wait, I explain wait. it? So I mean, th- I'll, I'll help you say yeah. that. Okay. There's a kind of like an MK Ultra mind control thing going on. Right? Okay, so what's uh-huh. the plot of the movie? We haven't even <laughs> talked about the fucking plot. Can we go over I'm, the plot for like, like 20 seconds? Plot, yeah, right? 20 right. seconds. Bryce Dallas Howard's in the movie. She plays like a J.K. Rowling type author who uh-huh. writes this series of books called the Argyle series. And, and Argyle is a fictional James Bond type spy goes on all these Imagine. mysteries. But she spy. ends up bumping into our boy Sam Rockwell, who ends up being a real life spy, mm-hmm. uh, and tells her basically that all of the shit that she's wrote in the books has happened in real life. Okay. And that the book that she's planning on finishing, which is the fifth and final book, she they need her to finish writing to know what's going to happen like in the real world. And she's like, I'm not a fortune teller, but it ends up happening. Yeah, 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 and for yeah. what it's worth, it's like it's almost like a fantasy element. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is there's a twist that solves it and you go, oh, that makes sense. Uh-huh. So that's why I liked all that shit. It's like, OK, cool. Uh, at the end of the movie. There's like, you know, like I said, there's MK Ultra stuff. Okay. You know, there's a mm-hmm. the whole spy shit. There's real spies, fake spies, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. There's an evil woman who's actually the mom from Home Alone, the redhead. Yeah. <laughs> she has like a, a, a dance, what do you call it? A music box with yeah, a little dancer on with it. With a little belly. And whenever yeah. she's twisting and playing it, whenever the song is playing, the character that it's controlling is under the mind control of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like a sleeper agent. <laughs> oh, okay. Which yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. a really great But toy. the scene takes place on like one of those like, um, like transportation cargo ships that yeah. are like on the fucking ocean. <laughs> And, and like she has like a little away. tiny box and she's <laughs> running across and she's like, ah, she's like, like 20 feet away. She's like, fight her! Bro. <laughs> that bitch can't hear anything, bro. They the audio from the other. box. Yeah. yeah. Like super far away. It's but like when Jerry brought loud it up, ass like, water. shut up, Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> but, the, quiet. but the thing about those scenes, the thing about these three scenes that bothered me is that they start really bad and then they get like okay yeah yeah so it's like okay okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that first one hits you and you're like Ugh. it's a real gut punch. it takes you're you like, out the whole movie the... and i'll say this but bobby said this he said that in he said that it was the director of kingsman and and kingsman i remember there's that scene where if you've watched it they're in that last ship where is like it, where all the rich people are, yeah, yeah, and, the and their heads pop, their heads all pop after they take the the put the implant chip, mm-hmm. and they all explode in rainbow, and it's basically the same vibe, yeah. but like turned up. All the smoke grenades lot. that they're using are different rainbow right. colored, and it's like a, it's visually speaking, it is a really pretty scene. But it's the right. fact that it's, and I will say this to credit it. I also told Jerry this in the movie. There's a yeah. famous, it's not a famous saying, but there is a saying that goes around that says Tom Cruise runs, Brad Pitt eats. Sam Rockwell dances because in every single movie that Sam Rockwell mm-hmm. is in, he fucking dances. It's like a thing that he does. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to think that the fact that there's a whole choreographed, like yeah. slow dance, murder action sequence it's is part of a nod that. because that's what he's known for. Mm-hmm. So if you know that going in, like even I was watching it, like okay, cool, he's but, dancing, but most yeah. people don't. So yeah. they go in and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" You know what and I mean? If you're a movie critic, everything you about the because... scene makes sense when you analyze it, but looking at the scene, it's not done in a way where you want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's and, interesting. And it just makes me want to watch it. The yeah. last thing that I'll say that isn't spoiler free, and I've said my my my, my review already says seven point five. Mm-hmm. Writing, I think the writing is good. I think, you know, the cinematography is fine. There's nothing super special, but there's nothing bad about it either. Uh, what I will say is I think the acting is pretty good, but I'll say for the one character who has, like, that mind control shit going on, there is something weird about the change into the third act for me where I just couldn't see them in that light. Like, they were still yeah. <laughs> stuck in this other version, and then when they change, it's like, it just doesn't yeah. it didn't work. Yeah, it's not like an Ed Norton fucking Brad Pitt thing where it's yeah. like, it's it's not as, as clean. They tried. I want to, they I tried. Want, exactly. I want to hear Jerry, Jerry's <laughs> number. Tried. If you give a number to, yeah, what would you yeah. give? Uh, I'll give it a six. Okay. That's fair. That's closer to what critics gave it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the one thing I'll say that is spoiler, 
uh, written, so spoiler alert if you want it. Uh, the movie has a, a, a post credit scene, right? Mm-hmm. And what's actually pretty interesting is the post credit scene opens on a pub in England called The King's Man. Mm-hmm. And they had already made mentions before that Argyle and the Kingsman universe were going to have a shared universe. And Ooh. I actually did find out afterwards that Vaughn has a, a third series of movies that he's making too. That And the three of those series are going to combine to be this spy universe that he's making. So kind of dope. Mm. That's dope. Um, but the interesting thing is the post credit scene basically reveals that the real Agent Argyle, or wait, let me rephrase that, the fictional Agent Argyle that exists in the book universe that the, the author's written, his origin story is he basically gets accepted to be in the Kingsman when he's a very young man. So he was an OG member of like the Kingsman. But when the when the shot basically pans out of the scene at the pub, it reveals the poster in the author's house of the Argyle series. And it reveals that they're not making a sequel to Argyle, but they're going to make a movie based on the fictional book. So the next movie we get isn't going to have Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell. It's most likely going to have Henry Cavill, John Cena playing the fake versions of that's the spy. That's very yeah. meta. So it's super yeah. meta. So that's like the future of where the movies are going. Yeah. That's how it connects to the King. And I universe. like that because that makes this one like a teaser because they were in the movie a lot, but I don't think yeah. they even spoke at all. No, they do. They're very In little. the beginning. Like yeah. That's the whole thing. They're mostly just like doing like a little switch off like so you yeah. can see the visual like okay this is what it's trying to do yeah. oh in a okay. way like i it's kind of that's cool that movies do that like the last movie i saw the voyager it mentioned that this movie was basically inspired by a journal that is found in the book dracula so in the book dracula the characters find a journal and in that journal is about a voyage that like everyone in the ship like died mm. and they were just like damn that's crazy and the story continued that movie, The Voyage, is what happened on that ship. Crazy. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You basically took a story within a story and made a movie. I like stuff like that. Yeah. So Argyle, 7.5. I'll rock with it. If you don't mind me saying, I'd like to just mention one last thing. Uh, not about movies, but about music. Okay. That I've been noticing in the music industry. And I wanted to get uh, all of your opinions on it, but mainly Dylan's, because I feel like this is up Dylan's opinion alley. <laughs> okay. There's kind of a new thing that artists are doing that people are mad about. And Ariana Grande got, she was kind of like the first big name to get uh, pegged for it. So apparently Ariana Grande released an album recently that yes. got people excited. But then when people listened to the album, they found out that the album was like 11 versions of the same song. So it was like the regular <laughs> version, the acoustic version, the sped up version, the slow down uh. version, the reverb version, right? Then The weekend this- dropped. A similar concept album with this song popular that came out over last summer with, you Mm -hmm. know, the slow down version, all those different versions. So basically, there's a whole thing of artists doing this to try to steal listens to the original song and to basically have people listen to the alternate versions of the song so that they don't listen to other people's singles as much as the main single on the album. So it basically fucks up all the Mm -hmm. listening charts whatsoever. So I just found it very interesting. I wanted to see your take mm. on it. Was. So, firstly, I noticed this because this weekend I was listening to like the top 100 on Spotify or whatever. And not only is it a lot of older songs, but it's literally one of those weekend remixes. See? So, I've noticed this. I mean, the, the sped up, sped down thing has been a thing for a while. That's Nightcore. But I feel like a lot of people have been doing this now where there's like remix albums Mm -hmm. almost now where it's like you're remixing this original song, mm. but you're already a big artist. Like, you don't have to. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. The sped up, slow down kind of makes sense, but artists need to be clear if they're doing that kind of thing. Yeah. That it's not like, hey, this is a new album. No, it's not. No, it's, it's shady. Song. It's pretty no, shady. It is. Yeah. yeah. Like, at least other, like, it's happened before, but at least those artists are just, they drop it on Spotify, like, oh, it's just, you know, yeah. it's just a remix album or whatever, but. Two things popped into my head bringing this up. Um, one was, is the sped up uh, uh, version just to like create TikTok dances or something? Because That's a big like- part of it. I mean, I, I doubt it's for that. And I think it's kind of like in this era, they have an idea that people are going to do it anyway. So they yeah. jump the gun and they mm-hmm. just put it out. And, and also like- a lot of people like, like this, people that like the slowed down version, like that was a big yeah. slowed and reverb. Yeah. So almost everything has like a slowed and reverb version mm-hmm. and then a yeah. nightcore version, which is that's what the sped up is usually called. Exactly. Yeah. Second thing is I can see how it Fs up like the charge because they'll look at it and be like, all right, number one is popular by this, and then number two is popular, but it's not even that. It's the fact that it's basically like if 
like let's say popular for example if popular gets really pop popular on the charts and they start listening to it but at the same time they're listening to those other versions like the slow the acoustic it stays up there it fucks up all the other artists charts yeah. too because now they're not they're not getting the same amount of numbers for their single that doesn't have all these other versions too mm. so the artist that should be in number two number three gets delegated down to like five six seven because no. There's like eight other versions of a fucking song that's Maybe we should make other versions of this podcast. Have like a negative version, like a slowed down version. No. <laughs> that'd, that'd be, that's a lot of work for Bobby. Damn right. We yeah. can have a mirrored version. That's interesting though. I wonder how much money like people have been making from like those slowed and reverb that these companies were like, all right, we're just going to do it ourselves. No, yeah. That's, that's a great no, question. Yeah. I mean, we all know the music industry has been in shambles for like the last twenty years. Yeah, so just patchworking. So like everything. anything that they what, get. What, come what if up we with? gave? What if we gave this artist ten million dollars? Yeah. Like, why? Are, why are we doing? Why are we that? doing that? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that in the ethos. Do you want to wow. talk about this kid prepping for UFC before we finish? Yeah, man. <laughs> we Speaking have like two of minutes. Like, so. TikTok and stuff. You got. You got two minutes. Get okay. out there. This kid, he he posted online. If this video gets two hundred thousand likes, I'll do whatever the first comment says. Whatever the top comment yeah. is. <laughs> so he made that goal, and the top comment said. Uh, I, I wish I could pull up my phone but just yeah. look for it and everything. Top comment was around the lines of... No, it's a long way. It's fly to go, Thailand, learn the culture, uh, learn, speak the language. learn Muay Thai, practice in it, become a champion, win a tournament, come back to the United States, retire with your titles. All that and shit. say it was because of this. And say it was because of this comment. That be, got the most likes and became the top comment. And when the kid noticed it, he said bet. And since September to now, February 2024... Um, he has been training and by like doing lunges and push-ups that you've actually gradually seen him slimmer, like slim out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, he's made a GoFundMe. His father is, wants to plan a trip a whole summer long in Thailand where he actually does train with a couple of Uf- like fighters that are out there that are offering services. Sports Center wants to do a interview with him. Yeah, keep in mind this kid has like a, over a million followers yeah. on Instagram. He was just a nobody, like in like a small town. This guy, uh, this guy reached out to him, Buka. He was like, "Come through, we'll take care of you, we'll train you." <laughs> it was like Jesus Christ, bro! It was like the greatest Muay Thai fighter. He got he, this kid literally has been given a main quest <laughs> in his life. He and was just, has to do he it. just like, I'll do anything. Well, and somebody just threw anything. this at him. <laughs> I think it's funny that we live in a time where a child can come up with everything they want to do and for the rest of their life based on a fucking TikTok comment. Some <laughs> random guy Low dropped. Low key, I want to see if he actually does it. He he probably isn't. No, you saw what he's doing now? He's just like, now he does every day. He's like, uh, he does a, a sweeping kick or something. Yeah, and <laughs> a lot of people are angry, like commenting like, when are you going to go to Thailand? He actually raised like thousands of dollars and like he's all right now he's, he's getting in trouble now. He's a fucking child, bro. Let him finish school yeah. first. <laughs> no, you got to move to Thailand now. <laughs> he'll take American no, no, kickboxing no, no, no. seriously and then he'll move over and No, 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 fuck school. Switch, go to Thailand. To the newest hot fucking uh, Instagram trend is uh for every follower I'll do this. That's my favorite. No, it's actually casual pedophilia. That's <laughs> That's the new Instagram trend that's, that's sweeping the weird. nation. That's very weird. No, yeah. everybody. Oh, but me and Jose are up on this conspiracy level theory thing, man. We're deep into it. Bro. Don't talk about it. Or the next thing you know, you're going to have all that stuff I don't stuff give a fuck. It's computer. juicy as fuck. It's great. It's, <laughs> you're going to have all that stuff on your The idea is that the government is making this super nonchalant, so we all laugh about it. So when all this, you know, real fucking Epstein shit comes out, we'll just be like, ha ha, you know, and we won't take it as seriously. Think about that. Literally happened fucking overnight. It happened overnight. It did happen overnight. Yeah. We were was... everything was all fine and dandy and then that kid was in the movie theater and everybody was making real out of fucking pocket comments about what they would do to that kid in that movie theater. And it was like, bro, this kid I is blame Ken. Elon. I yes, I do blame Elon indirectly, not for the Instagram. Mistakes, Elon Lust has a lot of Elon problems. was the first domino that fell to get us here. I will say that. Why? Cause Maybe the not the first. I blame Twitter? Trump. I blame. Uh, I blame Martin Scorsese. You know, who I really blame. I blame the motherfuckers that came here on the Mayflower and started this whole shit. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck those Fuck guys. Those guys. Go to India. <laughs> <laughs> no, go to America. You see, get it? Because they fucked up. Man. Mm. It's they a joke. Fucked up. Uh, shout out to the Santa Maria. Shout out to the Pina. The Pina. The, the Pina, Nina. The Pina. Shout out to the Pinta. <laughs> shout out to the Jam of the Yam, Louis. Yeah. Uh, this week, Dylan's going to go first. What? Got oh, my oh, Yam Lord. of the Week is from a group called Handsome Boy Modeling School. Oh, I know those guys. Yes. Uh, imagine just uh, the avalanches if they lived in New York City. 
uh, very cool producers that do jazz rap, and then the other half are Plunderphonics. The song is Sunshine, a beautiful song. I was going to pick one with Jack Johnson, but I decided... I don't know who the singer is Mm -hmm. on the song, but it's mostly samples, and it's beautiful. Got it. Yeah, we're going to listen to it later. Nice. Just want to thank everybody out there for watching my podcast, Robert Rosario's The Joystick Show, where I'm allowed to do everything that I want and I can break my own rules. And if I want to shout out a secondary jam, I can because mm-hmm. I can't. So shout out <laughs> to Amoeba by Claro, but specifically the version she recorded at Electric Lady Studios because it's fantastic. Okay, that's actually Ooh. three songs. You're really pushing it. <laughs> it's not. It's just the version made there. Oh, okay. But both song. versions. No, I actually like that one a lot better because it has like three extra instrumentalists. You saved yourself. It's like a whole tiny desk type thing. But my actual jam is going to go to a song I found like two days ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's a Little Yachty song. Little Yachty's kind of on like a, he's kind of on like a whole progressive. He's he's on like a, he's he's, he's like in a Tyler arc, right? He's like Mm -hmm. on a rebound. Yeah, he really, really, re. he had a debut that was good, and then yeah. he had like seven straight bad albums, he's got a, he's but got now a, he's good now. He's got a really nice new song called A Cold Sunday. The beat is fucking fire. It makes me feel like I'm watching fucking uh, uh, The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross, but Little Yachty's rapping over it, and the music video, visually speaking, is really, really fire. So mm-hmm. shout-outs to A Cold Sunday. Uh, I got to thank my father for this slam, because my father uh, is playing a lot of PlayStation 3 in the basement, and he was playing Call of Duty Zombies. My oh, slam shit. of the week is Lullaby of a Dead Man, I it was which like is... Five. Nah, it's Lullaby of a Dead Man, because when I heard it, I was just... Flood of memories which, came by. Is that an Easter egg song? No, that's the When You Die, the credits, and you hear the people laughing. In which game? Like by Probably also. one or two. Uh, but the, you know you, it when you hear it. Did you know? I can give you an Easter egg. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, the dying music in every map is the Easter egg music in the next map. Boom. No, in which one? After Two? um after Black Ops One. No, after World of War. World of War, all Jerry? of the next ones are the yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Jerry the facts well, guy. I, I mean Jerry's oh. the zombies guy. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna tr- believe you on that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so my song of the week <laughs> is uh it's a Frank Zappa song. It's called Peaches and Regalia. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an instrumental. Oh, fuck Jerry. Jerry, you can't just come out of here with a fucking <laughs> with a Zappa song, bro. It's the weirdest <laughs> shit. It's an instrumental. I don't even know what he sounds like. It's like Joey being like, "My slam is from Earth, Wind, and Fire." <laughs> no, that's like jo- that's like Joey picking. I don't even know, bro. What well, the it's fuck? Like Joey picking the Wiggles, bro. How did Jerry find no it? Jer- I do Jerry have was the on, duck song. No, on really, Jerry list. was on Reddit at two a.m. and he found Frank Zappa Frank's, somehow. I don't nah, know. Nah, it was in my. Uh, is this in the my Jerry music Frank channel? Zappa era? Yeah. Jerry's about to show up in turtlenecks every fucking episode of the. Nah, Jersey it's movie. in the the music channel at my job. Okay, okay, I feel that valid. Yeah. Well. Well, wow. nice watching the Joystick Show. That was a fucking podcast. It was a fucking podcast. I'm very glad to have Dylan back from the treaches of Long Island. Mm-hmm. It's great to have you back in the five boroughs, in the best borough. Let's be for real. Uh fuck. Pat Burrow. Thanks to uh, thanks to Joey Edinburgh. for reviewing movies and making sure to put emojis at the end of them so that I can do fun things with them. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Jerry for going to movies with me and disagreeing with me about whether they were good or not. <laughs> and thanks to me for doing fucking everything here. So fucking, uh, we appreciate you for watching us. We appreciate you for hanging out with us, for watching the Joystick Show. If you liked it, uh, you can do just that. There's a like button. You click it. Little thumbs up. Uh, you could also, wait, let me see if I can do something good here. If you are underwater and you are writing a book, <laughs> you could subscribe. See what I did there? Sub. Scrap. Fuck you guys. Uh, there's another button that says that, so you can click that and help us out. And um, if you're part hunchback, uh, ring that bell. That's way better than what I said. That's also a third thing you can do. And then when you're done with all of that stuff, uh, you can go watch another video. Go fuck yourself. Paul Revere. <laughs> <laughs>